What's up, guys? Uh, this is Frog and Loathing back with uh, more Killer Frequency gameplay. Uh, when last we left, we found a strange key uh, around the office. Um, for those of you who didn't tune in, essentially we found uh, this weird um, this weird setup in uh, who I believe is our janitor's closet, and there was a mysterious key inside. Uh, so we left off where we were about to find out where that key went. Um, now, I know this game isn't super long by what I've seen. I haven't looked at any spoilers or anything, but, um, this may be the last stream of, uh, Killer Frequency, so we're gonna go ahead and see. We're gonna jump right in. I really like this game, though. It had really, really cool, uh, like, art and everything. Yo. What's up, dudes? How's it going, pa Passive Possum? How's it going, Andrew Jackson? My boys. Okay. So this is where we left off. Let me adjust my sound again. I keep messing up my sound. Um, okay, there we go. Like, like, like it? Heck yeah. <laughs> um, does my audio sound fine to you guys, by the way? I'm not entirely sure how that's sounding. Checking in here, looking if there's anything neat. I kind of forget some of the controls. Okay. Kind of re-familiarizing myself with everything. What's this? Okay, cool. So I sound good? Awesome. Uh, okay. I'm going to go ahead and place that over there. And we're going to go ahead and go in. Wait. Appar apparently we're not. Okay. Um, I think I'm supposed to go play this. So, we're going to go ahead and take this back first. Because it's not going to let me go in there. More to do. There's still more to do here uh, before I can leave. Okay. What? Okay, so it's in this room. Oh, so there's just a cassette player over here. I'm just blind, aren't I? Okay. Um, maybe I'm overthinking it. Maybe it has nothing to do with the cassette tape. I'm going to put the cassette tape down. We're going to look for something else. So this tape. Uh, duh, 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 duh. Okay. Um. Wait, hold on. Okay. I think that's what I needed. Am I able to go now? No. Is that? I mean, it's telling me something. Oh. Is it... Is it over here? Okay, where's that cassette tape? There it is. Huh. Okay, well, it was telling me something, so... Gotta think about what I need to be doing. Crouch and grab it. Okay, so it looks like like a cassette player, right? Then there's the metal shelves. The metal shelves look like they'd be in here, right? Yeah, like right there is is the metal shelf, is it not? Huh. Okay. Then I can't go in even if I have this. Can't go back. So I'm missing something in this room. Seen very little of the game. Would you recommend it? Uh, yeah. I mean, I really like it. It's it's pretty short. Um, I mean, I haven't even beaten the game, so I guess I don't really know. But w I've read that it's very short. But um, it's really unique. I've never really seen a horror game like it. I bet it would be really fun in VR. So I might re-explore it in the future in VR. Um, what is this? Oh shit. Okay. But yeah, no, I mean, I, I really, really like the game. I thought it was, uh, I thought it was really fun. I don't know why I keep saying it in, like, past tense, like, this is guaranteed gonna be the last stream. I actually don't know. I mean, we might have, like, another, uh, Killer Frequency stream after this, especially if I can't find out how to get out of this fucking room. Um, okay, so I've, I've searched, like, pretty much everywhere, I thought. Where's that ticking coming from? Hmm. 
very indie. Yeah, it is. It's um, it's pretty fun though. I mean, if you like indie games, I 100% recommend it. Oh, what is? Oh, oh, I'm a moron. I dude, I'm not gonna lie. I thought that was a tiny microwave. <laughs> okay, it makes a lot more sense. There's the play button. Okay, yeah. Never mind. <laughs> He says I need to follow the maps and find the tapes. I guess that's what this map is about. I think we need to see what hmm. else is hidden down here. Be careful for it. Keep yeah, looking. I mean, I'd agree, but... You found something. Okay, so I, I, I bet I'm probably able to go into that next room now. Yep, sure am. Okay, so, let me look at this. Okay. All right, yeah, I think I literally see that right in there. So, got to check both, both ways. Okay. Time of autopsy is seven a.m. Cause of death is oh, so I'm just following these now. The degree of rigor mortis indicates that the subject just so you know. has been Oh, what's up, Steffi Toad? Oh, thank you so much for the follow. That I appreciate it. Time of death. I appreciate you checking out the stream and giving me a follow, dude. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so, what in the world? Okay, so I guess I'm just following these like a map. That's pretty cool. Uh, huh. I'm like overthinking it, dude. Like my, uh, my mind is just racing. This game is really fun. Let's probably put this down for a sec here. Oh, wait, delivery note. Yeah, let's read that. Okay, uh, I must be affiliated with all frog enthusiasts. Heck yeah, dude. I, I really, really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, delivery note. Shipping date 2nd September 1987. Shipping from Starling Security. Delivery and installation. Security alarm system model 4000. St. Gabriel's Hospital, 87 McCready Street. Delivered installed number 1030. Christine's Gas and Repair, 55 Thornside Road. Delivered installed 1031. Roller Ricky's Roller Rink, 6 Romero Street. Delivered installed, 1032. Woodside Apartments, 42 Carpenter Avenue. Delivered, not installed. Unable to install, requires new parts. New installation date, 17th of September, 1033. KFAM Radio Station, 16 Mason Street. Delivered, not installed. Client opted for manual installation. Cool. Uh, I keep burying that on accident. I should probably quit doing that. Okay. No, he's literally a frog. Yes, I am. I am actually a frog. I, my anatomy is that of a frog. Hold on, dude. There's a lot of uh, a lot of codes. I'm not gonna remember all this, so I'm just gonna try and remember that this exists. That way, I can come and get it if I need. Because I'm probably gonna get trapped somewhere and need codes to get out. Circuit boards. Okay. There's so much stuff to interact with. I keep, uh... Did I just lose the paper? Oh, okay, there it is again. Um, pl place? Place it down? But you know what? Fine. Get some sticky notes. That would be a good idea. Um, like, get some in, like, real life or something to remember all this. I get distracted really easy in games. So, like, that's, like, one of my big issues is I'll end up, like, engaging in, like, four different objectives at once. I'll kind of forget where I, was at, where I was at and stuff. Yeah, jot it down like an old head. <laughs> That'd be cool. Just like have like a have like a monitor just littered with notes. The music changed. The vibe be different in here. Small lacerations to arms, legs, and face. Typically obtained by running through foliage. Hmm. Severe blistering to the feet. As if the deceased had been running without stopping. Interesting. Hey, more of that. I'm gonna place this aside for a sec and see what this says. This looks useful. It does. 
I mean, the other, I thought the other thing looked useful also. I mentioned all the numbers and stuff. Oh my god, hold it. S hold it. St oh, oh, you know what? It's fine. I can read it on the side. Uh, Police Department, Town of Gallows Creek. Case number 983-A56. So, um, <laughs> have a person you can write things on? The numbers, frog, what do they mean? Uh, 38, I don't know. There's so many, bro. Date of report, 3rd September 1968 prepared by Sheriff J. Matthews. Detailed report. At 4 a.m., a call was received from a jogger, a Miss Sandra Sharp, reporting that a body had been found washed up by the reservoir. I drove out to investigate and was able to identify the body at the scene as that of George Barrow. I contacted the coroner's office and then that boy's parents. They, they informed me that they had not seen him since 7 p.m. on the 2nd. Okay. I'm going to try and remember that. I'm going to place this aside because my character mentioned it would be important. I'm just going to drop it because it's not letting me place it. Okay. And then... I'm trying to find out which one was the new one. That was the one I just got. So this one... Oh, wait. Yeah, this is the new one. Okay. Awesome. Have a person correct things on. Received from a pogger. Nice. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, trying to navigate through here. He's just like leading me closer and closer to him. Preliminary toxicology results shows no signs of inebriation. However, a high amount of cortisol was found, indicating elevated levels of stress in the immediate moments before death. It's kind of cool just following all these. I really hope there's a little bit more to the game, because, like, I hope I'm not, like, super close to the ending, you know? Like, it'd be cool to see the killer pop up, but, I mean, I don't want to... I don't want the game to be over just yet. Did I just drop that? I did. Okay, so near the fan is where I need to go now. Here it is. Hmm. <clears throat> Sketch. I thought I heard a noise. I'm tripping. There's purple 80s retro lights. Okay. Additionally, there appears to be a post mortem injury to the arm. It looks like it was trapped oh. in a car door. It was trapped in a car door, you say? Okay. There. It's really dark in here. I was about to ask if this person carries a phone on him, but I'm like, it's the 80s. I don't think that was really a big thing. Did I just see something? Oh, it's just a moth or something. Okay. Um, There's lights. Yeah, I feel like I'm about to need that paper. So part of me is like I should run back and grab it. But it's okay. That's a lot of walking. I'm gonna go ahead and stay here for now. Okay. But it still goes on a little bit. This has to be important. Okay, so that's that's like three different important documents I've found now. So things are about to get real. Okay, report of investigation by county medical examiner. Name of deceased, George Barrow or Barrow. Time of death, nine oh two sixty eight at approximately nine PM. The deceased is a Caucasian male, age 18. The cause of death is established to be drowning as shown by the signs of asphyxiation. See section 2, paragraph 4 for more details. Abrasions were found on the knuckles, likely from getting into fights in the past. Matches with a uh, known history of the deceased being aggressive. No other injuries were observed, and from the coroner's opinion, there is no evidence of foul play. Additionally, the preliminary toxicology report indicates the deceased had a high level of alcohol in their blood. It is the coroner's opinion that the, the deceased went swimming while intoxicated, uh, resulting in drowning. Date 9-3-1968. Time 7 a.m. Examiner Virginia Sullivan. I'm sorry I made you do this, Virginia. Okay. Is there anything on the back? Nope. Okay, so that's an important document, too. I'm going to go ahead and place it right here. Uh, hopefully I don't forget it there, because I'm probably going to have to go back and get a bunch of stuff. There were suitcase phones, but they weighed like 40 pounds. I actually do remember that because they uh, they mentioned that in Yakuza. Like, I mean, I knew those things existed before that, but I just recalled that Yakuza takes place in the 80s. 
Um, if you're listening to this, then I'm probably dead. What the? Ooh, a new vinyl for my collection. Nice. Be that. It's called One Last Goodbye, so I feel like we're getting near the end of the game. That's kind of like environmental storytelling. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I might. Sorry, I'm like listening to this. Do something to hmm. make up for what I did back then, I guess. I didn't kill anyone, mind you. But that's past mattering. Now, there's more I could say than I should say. But my employer made it clear. Maybe now I should compile all my evidence. Uh, but yeah, to answer your question, um, I would love to stream the Yakuza games in the future. I mean, I've only ever actually beaten Yakuza 0, and then I started Yakuza 1, so I would I would replay the entire series. I'd go through Yakuza 0, and then I'd just be going in blind with all you guys. Sounds fun to me. Um, I do have a few other games ongoing also. I have uh, Danganronpa and Mass Effect, so I might wait until one of those games finishes as well, and then I might swap in one of those with uh, with Yakuza, since this is currently my only horror game I'm playing. Yeah, but anyway, yeah, let's go ahead and move on. So, oh wait. I'm going to grab that. I don't want to forget that. Is. I'm not entirely sure if it's going to be one of those things where it's like you just have to be in a certain area with all the evidence in order to use it. So I'm going to try and keep all the evidence together. It's probably best that way. Hmm. I already kind of forget where my other evidence is. I'm not going to lie. I think it was over here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so there's that. And this. Okay, so we're going to place all of them like on this little box area over here. That's where we're going to place those. Would really like to see a dragon. Like a dragon? Yeah, dude. Like a dragon looks really cool. I haven't really seen too much about it, but it. I've heard great things. Okay. Uh, I guess I'll start carrying these back one by one. May as well do that. I'm going to carry this one back first. I'm going to make a few trips just because, uh, you know, I might need these. Uh, oh, wait. Nope. Apparently I don't need them right this second. Okay, well, we're going to place some here, then. We're going to start moving them out here. Because apparently I've missed some things. Uh, sorry, I just got turned around. I was looking at my phone. <laughs> um, okay. So. Let's go ahead and move this over here as well, and then we'll move forward. Was there something I missed back there, I wonder? Because... Hmm. Let's, let's review all the evidence after we, um... After we sort of move forward. Okay, so... I wonder if it has something to do with this box. Does it let me interact with anything? It doesn't look like it. Okay. I'm trying the action button on, like, all these things. And I don't believe there's anything in here other than this thing. Wait a minute. Aha! Oh, wait. No, that was literally just telling me to go around the corner. And I already, already played that. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, close both of those. Is it in the big drawer, I wonder? No? Okay. Um, do, 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 do. Truck. <laughs> that was so much force, oh my god. Is there anything on the back? No? Humpty Dumpty, a story of love, tragedy, and betrayal, starring Macy Cartwright as Don George Barrow as Hen- er, as Don. Oh, okay, and George Barrow as Henry. Okay. And George Barrow is who we suspect Clive to be, right? And then Clive is our janitor. Okay, I'm starting to put it all together. Okay. Mouse trap. Okay, I'm gonna listen to this one more time because maybe it has some kind of hint. Probably dead. I'm a man who likes to stay informed. I've got subscriptions to newspapers all over the country. A few weeks ago, I noticed headlines cropping up in those papers, one after the other. Each headline about a murder. Each murder, the death of someone I knew almost 20 years ago. And each one 20 years ago. drawing closer to Gallows Creek. He said he didn't kill anyone. Damn, homie, keep whispering in my ear. Yeah! <laughs> What's up, Monday? How's it going? Okay. Yeah, I'm like... I'm usually pretty good at solving puzzles, but... I don't know, we'll see. I'm gonna play around with this for a little bit. If you guys have any ideas, uh, I'm definitely open to hear it. Is that, like, baking soda? What is that? Or is that, like, printer paper? It might be printer paper. I don't know. Uh, I'll place it right here. I don't really need that, I don't think. Okay. Hmm. Uh... Okay, I can't open any of that. I guess I'll go back to the main room and see if there's anything I can interact with there, because I don't... I genuinely don't see anything to interact with, so I, I guess I just have to take those papers I found and uh, see what's up with all those. Okay, nothing over there. Nothing... Okay, and I don't think it'll let me go over here, right? Okay, so there's still more to do. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. And we're going to get to work over here. Okay. Um. Okay. What's the goal here? I wasn't here at the end of the last stream. Um, so, that's a good question. Basically, uh, my co-host for, uh, for this radio station, uh, well, yeah, I guess it wasn't really her fault. We ended up finding, uh, finding out something in the, um, there was something in the basement of uh of the radio station and essentially we found a mysterious key there and that's how we're in this area um so we found out that our janitor might be the killer 
but recent ev- recent evidence basically just showed his confessional where he, he said that he never killed anyone. I mean, he could just be lying to us, but it seems almost like it's going to be a plot twist where he's actually not the murderer. He's just some creepy guy. Um, but anyway, yeah, I think this probably has something to do with it. Let me see. Uh, system overview. Uh, when entering codes and commands, sequential key depressions must be made within four to five seconds of one another. If four to five seconds elapse without a key depression, the entry will be aborted and must be repeated from its beginning. Be sure to observe the precaution when performing any of the procedures in this manual. If you make a mistake while entering a security code, stop, press the star key, uh, star key then start over. If you stop in the middle, middle uh, while entering a code and then immediately start the entry over, an erroneous code might be entered. Okay. Our state-of-the-art security system uses a six-digit code system. Simply enter the code into the keypad and feel total peace of mind. Okay. The starting secu- uh, or the Starling Security 4000 system comes with a range of features. The default codes for these features are listed below. Note, please change these codes immediately to prevent unwanted entry. Okay. Um. Huh. Okay. I didn't see anything like that huh I'm trying to find out where this box is write those codes down yeah that might be a good idea I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and take this with me and I'll just uh cause I mean if you glance over at it like here check this out uh if you glance over at it it'll actually just tell you all of it like it has like a little pop up thing so I can just glance over I just need to find out where I enter this. It has to be in that final room, but I, I didn't see anything I could interact with. Okay. Um, there's something over there. Um, maybe now that I have the book, it'll let me interact with it. Okay, so this is... This kind of looks like... A thing. A little bit. Kind of, sort of. Okay. That locker? Maybe. Uh, I'll go look in the locker again. Um, in fact, I'm going to open up all the lockers and just see if there's anything in them. I'm opening all the lockers! What's with that purple light? I don't know why that's bothering me. Can't open that. Can't open that. This, I don't know why, but this just looks suspicious to me. Like, it could just purely be aesthetic. But it looks like that's important somehow. Okay. Nothing over there. Nothing I can see in there. Hold on. Status indicator. Display. Keypad. Okay, so this looks like it would be something small. You know? Okay, well... It's like I can't go anywhere, so it has to be around here, right? Oh, hold on. It's an autopsy tape. Doesn't I didn't even realize I could who, do that. I think it must be for George. Poor George. This might lead us somewhere. So young. Something's bugging me, Peggy. What do you mean? I swear I recognize the voice of the woman talking on the tape. I just can't place it. Seriously? Is it Peggy? Do you think you've met her before? I don't know. I mean, I just got here recently. I don't know. Found another tape. It talks more about how George died. What did it say? It sounds like he was running for his life, spreading through trees and bushes, getting cut up all over. What would drive someone to do that? I'm not sure yet. There's also a tape about a toxicology report. There were no signs yeah, of drinking ton of stuff or in there. that he was on anything. What? But everyone said he went swimming drunk and drowned. It was in the newspaper and everything. I found a written autopsy report. What does it say? According to that, it's just like you said at the start. George drowned after getting drunk. Said he liked to fight, too. But that contradicts the tape. I know. 
And I think I know why. There's a note with a report that says, I'm sorry I made you do this, Virginia. If it was on the autopsy report, then Virginia must be our coroner. Wait, the caller from earlier. Hmm. When we had to call the takeout restaurant, wasn't her name Virginia? We need to call oh, her yeah, that really, we finish down here. That it really looks like one. she might know something about what's going on. I found a tape that introduces a new detail to the story. Post-mortem injury. Apparently, his arm... I think I gathered all the evidence whenever I was supposed to be doing it, like, yeah. one by one. After so it's like my died. character's just, like, How do you going on and on with this. It's kind of funny. I'm a radio producer, not a coroner. Hmm. The written report I found doesn't mention it at all. How did his arm get trapped in a car door after he died? Unless he got it when the police collected his body. I guess someone else must have moved him after he was dead to where he was eventually found. But the report, what is going on here? I found a police report, mentions a friend from earlier, Sandra Sharp. Sandra, the jazz runner? That's right, she found George's body washed up at the reservoir. The reservoir? <laughs> yeah, what's strange about that? George yeah, I feel like there's just multiple police, killers, right? like there, there can't just be there's one killer, it doesn't make any sense, I feel. Also, how did it wash up at the reservoir? What do you mean? Reservoirs don't have tides. But that's what the police report said. It's not possible, though. I did a school project on reservoirs and got an A. But, yeah, not important right now. The important thing is that it doesn't make sense. What are you suggesting? Such a weird then? thing to do a project that the body on. Was I, I guess not too found weird, but... Somewhere other than what the report suggests. That the sheriff tried to cover it up, but accidentally let something slip? Something like that. I think. Well... Sheriff Matthews wrote the report. If he hadn't been eviscerated, we could have asked him. True. But Sandra is still alive. Once we're done down here, we should give her a call. I, um... I think I found Clive's last recording. I think Clive might be gone. Screwdriver. I found a confession. Not for any killings, but... For playing a part in covering up George's death. He left this behind in case he died. He hoped someone would find it. You... Do you think the Whistling Man hmm. already got him? Possibly. We've had a lot the of whole town is the killer. Tonight, but what if the killer is just the friends we made along the way? Wouldn't that be made great? It to the phone, you know? We don't know how many there really are. Christ, Forrest, that's dark. I know, but Clive said he had read about other murders in other towns, and that. Okay, the so now he's now we're on the same page. It's like about the incident. Yeah. And the killings were getting closer to Gallows Creek. He said he wanted to do something good for once. The board in his office. He wasn't tracking people down to kill them. He was tracking them down to Oh, he was tracking them down to protect them. them. Uh, why didn't he just ah. come out with all of this? Uh, he said his employer threatened his family if he spoke out about any of it. His employer? The one who orchestrated the cover-up? Oh, Clive. I'm sorry for thinking you killed all those people. Found everything, Forrest? I think there's gotta be more down here. I need to find all the tapes. You think so? How much did Clive hide down there? Well, I'm wondering where else I need tapes, to look. Then there must be more maps to follow, right? That seems to be the case. All right then. Buzz the intercom when you find something and want to discuss it. Um. Okay. More to do. I'm I'm so lost though. I don't know where else to. Here, can I buzz it and like be like I'm lost? I think there's got to be more down here. I need okay, to find all the tapes. Something. Okay. So. Uh, How much did Clive hide all right, down back there? to the drawing board. Well, if there are more tapes, then there must be What's more this? maps to follow, right? That seems to be the case. All right then. Mm. Buzz the intercom when you find something and want to discuss it. Okay. Anything that's going to sound here? Nope. Okay, so, I need to find out wherever this goes. Like, whenever I look at this, it almost looks like a thermostat a little bit, you know? I mean, I know it's a, literally an alarm system, but... So, my point is that it, it's probably really small and it's easy to overlook. So, I guess I'm looking for this again, because I have no idea where else to go. Okay. So I can't go back to the beginning. 
follow these. I need to check more carefully where everything is. Okay. Hmm. Turn the brightness up. Yeah. Here, I mean, I'll do that. Okay. I don't want to turn it up too much. And, like, break immersion or anything. That helps out a little bit, yeah. Kind of seems like the lights are on now. It's funny. I mean, I guess they kind of are, so never mind. Makes sense. Is there not a way for me to open this? Hmm. Okay. Okay. There's no alarm system over here. Okay, what else am I looking for? I don't understand what else could possibly be over here. Hmm. Okay, well maybe I'm looking for the wrong thing at the wrong time. So, ultimately I should be looking for more, uh, for more tapes, right? Okay, nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing. Okay, I can't see anything there. I mean, yeah, because ultimately... Ultimately, I just thought that, uh... I thought I was supposed to use those codes immediately, but I might not even be in the area I'm supposed to use those in yet. Hmm. So weird. Okay. Um. Nothing of use over there. We've already opened this up a few times. Gonna get down and look a little bit closer. And grab a mouse trap. That's not really gonna do me anything. I don't think. Okay. Okay. Um, I thought that was something over there. Okay, I guess not. If I stand up really tall, I can I can see where I'm supposed to go. Okay, nothing in there. There was another tape that was hidden. Uh, it was like a hidden hidden a dark shelf. You already see that? Uh. Maybe? I actually don't think I have. Where where was that at? Okay. Where in the world? Okay, that's just trash. Okay, there's that. Why don't you be like something to do with this? This thing I've just been like throwing around. Um look for a red light. Okay. Okay, hold on. Like right here? I've already, I've already got that one. Okay. Wait a sec. No? 
Okay. Dude, where where is this thing? I feel like I'm just overlooking this. Hmm. What's this? Okay, that's, I already felt, saw that before. Okay. Um. Huh. I feel like I've almost turned this place upside down looking for this. This is the first one I found. I wish I could open that. Blue. Yeah, okay, so I officially do not see anything over here. Okay, so let's let's go into here. Do you think you found everything for us? I think there's gotta be more down here. I need to find all the tapes. You think so? How much did Clive hide down there? Well, if there are more tapes, then there Dude, I don't... more maps to follow, right? That seems to be the case. All right, then. Buzz the intercom when you find something and want to discuss it. Okay. More maps to follow. Okay. So that has to be the hint. So there... I, I guess I'm supposed to be looking for... Uh, some kind of map, I guess. Man, at this rate, I might end up having a whole nother, uh, a whole nother stream of this game, because I cannot find out where I'm supposed to go. Okay, so we're looking for a map. Okay. Okay, nothing over there, nothing over there. Oh my god. Bro. Where is this? Wait. Right? Did I ever see that? I don't know if I ever saw that. I mean, it just leads right here, and I've already got this, though. It is the coroner's opinion that the subject likely feared for his life and was chased, resulting in a fall from a height into a body of water. Weird. I don't know if I ever got that, though. I wonder if that's what I had to do. It's like I just had to get the clue for the thing I already found. Wouldn't that be wild? Okay. Um. Okay, well, that's all I can think of is, I mean, because I don't, I don't think I missed anything else. No, did you? Wait a minute. Oh, no, I thought I saw something. What have you found, Forrest? In another tape, the coroner comes to the same conclusion yeah. as I did. What the... George dude, I literally just had to find something. the evidence Maybe an that animal? led there. Maybe... But okay. Then there's this next bit where the coroner That's wild. thinks it's literally moved because I missed a hint death. that led me to so a tape I already found. At the end of the tape, someone burst in and demanded Virginia stop recording. I, I think it was Clive. This is starting to make sense now. This. Okay. This is a conspiracy to cover up what happened to George. Do you think you found everything? <sighs> I think so. 
for it. What's going on here? Someone wanted that boy's dad. Dude, I just forgot where I put my other. And they hired uh, Clive to make it look that way. Uh, Damn. Come back upstairs when you're ready. I forgot where I put my other uh, my other paper now. Step. Oh, it's okay. I guess I'm getting pulled anyway. Bro was down there for like ten years. Thank God, you're back, Forrest. I've been running out of stuff to pad our airtime with. Peggy, you work in radio. Forrest, I'm stressed. I mean, really. How are we supposed to keep a show going with all this happening? I didn't even realize I have uh, this one. The Barton Finds. Long Ride Home. I'm going to play this. This is our job, Peggy. We, we got to do it. <sighs> You're right. So, what's the plan now? I think we should call Virginia back. All right, I'll get her on the line. Time to turn the music off. Yeah, I just got this Gallows one. Creek. Right. This is Forrest Whatever. Nash. And I think We're this is the uh, to the truth behind this is events. Like the, the one I just got. To right. this end, we're calling back one of our earlier callers, Virginia Sullivan. Plunker here? Who's this? Is it you? Goose? What? Plunker, hey, it's the Radio Man, Forrest Nash. Radio Man? What's up? Solving mysteries, saving lives, the huge. Right, 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 right on. Plunker, what are you doing at Virginia's house? Plunker, why do you talk yes, like this? We could stay to keep an eye out for that whistling. Turd. So we're hanging out, bro. <laughs> well, that's uh, that's big of you, Plunker. Oh, <laughs> it's nothing. Can I speak to Virginia? Sure thing, Radio Man. I don't think Virginia was the oh, one I was thinking her. of. I was thinking who of the girl this? who was like, "Hey, Virginia, super, it's Forrest. I'm uh, glad you're still okay." Oh, Forrest. Sorry, I'm still jumpy. Oh, wait, maybe it is the person I was thinking of. I can't blame you. I'd be jumpy, too. I'm so sorry this happened to you, Virginia. I thought I was. I thought... Easy. We're not calling It's cool this vinyl looks like a, like a tiger's eye. That's kind of cool. We think you can help us understand why this is happening tonight. Me? What would I know? Uh... Does the name Clive mean anything to you? Clive? No, I don't know that name. What are you asking about this for? You mentioned that name earlier. You're the murderer. We know you did it. The first time. I don't know what I said then. I was petrified, Forrest. Clive's the janitor at our station, and we know you spoke to him in the past. Forrest, please. You don't know what you're doing. He'll come for me. Virginia, it's okay. Clive won't be coming after you. We think Clive's dead. Dead? But isn't he? He's the whistling man, Forrest. Um. We thought so too, but. You don't understand. All those years ago, he. It's okay, Virginia. He's gone. We found evidence to suggest he. Well. And we found your autopsy reports for George Barrow. Well, he didn't. I don't know if he kept them or made copies or what, but we found them. And we know it's related to what's happening tonight, which is why we called you. Why did you write a false report? I... Huh. All right. One day, I Again, came into work to find a, a boy on my slab. And as I finished the autopsy, this man, Clive, he just burst in. And he started making demands to give over the reports, to falsify what I found. Of course I said no, but, well, when someone wants to make you do something, mm -mm. they can use the carrot or the stick. For me, he used both. You see, my sister is sick. She has a chronic condition that's never going away. It's expensive to treat, 
and it was getting to where I couldn't afford it. And Clive promised me that his employer would pay for my sister's treatment if I did what he said, and that if I ever spoke about this, he'd beat me to within an inch of my life. I don't know why he had me do it, but my sister needed me. You have to understand, she needed me. We understand. Okay. Oh, speak for yourself, Peggy. Thank you, Virginia. Um, no, it's okay. That was brave. God, I just want this nightmare to end. This will help end it, Virginia. Thank you. Stay safe, Virginia. I feel like we just killed her. She's so dead now and it's our fault. Virginia is tied up in all of this. Clive threatened her to keep quiet about George's death. But for who? I Why cover these. up these details? Crap. Well, we know Sandra was involved in George's death. Do you want to call her? I do. Hey. All right, but before we go asking questions, I think we should know what we want to ask. Is that fair? Yeah, we need to ask her about finding the body. She was the one who discovered it, but something just doesn't add up. A hundred percent. She knows more than she's saying. I wonder what she's hiding. We'll hopefully find out soon. Anyway, just be careful when you're talking to her. Don't push too hard. We don't want her to hang up. I'll be careful. All right, calling her now. Hopefully she's at her jazz studio. Aha! Forrest, you're through. Hello, this is Sandra at Jazz Pizzazz Jazz Studio. Who is this? Hello again, Sandra! It's Forrest Nash of 189.16, The Scream. And you're live the on scream. air. <laughs> oh, I always thought folks called into a radio show, not the other way around. How jazzy. What can I do for you? Uh, well... <laughs> We're trying to understand what's behind the attacks tonight. We had a few questions. Why, Forrest, of course. Heck, after the way you saved my life, I'd say yes to just about anything you asked. Okay. Um, Do you know why the whistling man might have targeted you? Ha! As far as I could tell, he was just a knife-wielding psycho with superhuman cardio. He'd have chased after anybody. Right, well... We think he might be chasing specific people. People who know about the death of a boy named George. Oh, I don't know anything about that. Sorry. Sandra, we know you found George's body. We have the police report. I... I don't know what you mean. Don't be a liar, Sandra. Don't be a liar. It doesn't suit you. I'm not lying. I... I... Oh, look at the time. Sure is late. I have to go. I'll drive home now or just drive. I'm sorry. Well, Damn. I might have gone a bit hard on her. A bit? All right, all right. Let's just move on. Well, folks, if Damn. anyone out there I didn't realize has you could actually feel those things. On what's I should going probably be careful. Tonight, please call in. That's good timing. We've got a call waiting just this second. I messed up. Welcome to 189.16, The Scream, with me, your host, Forrest Nash. Hi, Forrest. I know this is really out of the blue with everything happening. Is that the pizza dude again? But I wondered if you could send this special birthday message to my uncle. You want to do that now? Really? Why? Of course now. It's his birthday. I won't have a chance to do it again until next year. May as well, Forrest. Uh, fine. What's his name? Thank you, Forrest. He's my Uncle Ronnie. His first name's Peter, but he never liked his name. Yeah, it's about but to it's the freaking pizza guy again. Salt and pepper hair, even as a kid, can you believe it? Folks always called him Pepper. Uh, thanks for the history lesson. Is there anything besides yeah, happy yeah. birthday you would like to say to Mr. Pepper? Oh my god damn it! Yes! Tell him he can get the best birthday deals and party packages here at Pony's Pizza! Start again, Jeff! You son of a bitch! Stop calling us! God damn it, Peggy! This is your fault! My fault? I kinda like I said the pizza I didn't want to do it. Don't blame me because Brian Ponty can't control himself. Uh, Don't worry. We've already got another caller on the line. Just pick it up, okay? This is 189.16, The Scream. I'm Forrest Nash. You're on the air, caller. <laughs> Come 
collar. It's better than another prank. Right? <laughs> Ponty. Ponty's pizza always delivers. Come rain or sleet or whistling. Oh wind, my God. Dude, what if it's Ponty this whole time? Forest? Ponty is the whistling man. Forest? Are you okay? <sighs> Forest? I hope bro, Forest is really pissed off about this dude. Slicer. Jesus, God, Forest? Bro. Sorry. Sorry. That was That was too much. It's okay. It's been a high stress night. Don't worry about him anymore, okay? Not for tonight, anyway. I think he's spent for now. Huh. We've got another call. Whenever you're ready. Folks, Dude, I swear if it's Ponty again. Don't spend your money at Ponty's Pizza. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Moving along, I'd like to welcome another caller to 189.16. Okay, Tanner, whatever pizzas he's selling. <laughs> yeah, dude, me, same. Forrest Nash. Who may I say is calling? Well, hello again, Forrest. Don. Don. We played your song, Long Ride Home. Did you hear it? Can you tell Dawn, us? Don. That's the one I was thinking of whenever I said creepy Forrest, girl. I'm calling. Are you in danger? Oh, I sure am. Do you mean... Yes, he's after me now. You? I think so. He oh. must have heard me on the radio helping you. Helping? You didn't exactly help. Maybe I've been helping more than you know. I was out following a lead, trying to work out who would be next. After Chuck. And what happened? And I started to feel like I was being followed. I came back well, to my apartment. you may have found out who's next. But this Newfangled security system has me locked out. I need you to help me get inside. Oh, okay, hold up. Uh, uh, uh. Hold on. Damn it. Okay, uh. Don't you have a key to get in? Only through the apartment door. The front gate I think it's that piece of paper downstairs, code. so she's probably going to do the thing where she hangs up and calls back, so I just have to run and grab that. that. Code to get inside. Which apartment block do you live in? Maybe one of our listeners lives there, too. It's the New Woodside apartment building between the town hall and the trailer park, but I doubt any of your listeners Woodside. live there. I don't have many neighbors. Sounds like a prime piece of real estate. The sound really carries at night. <laughs> Shit. Sounds like a noisy part of town. It is. Boy, I wish he'd muscle that thing in. Oh. And now he's blasting David Scopo out of his window. This night can't get any... That was some fan. He's coming down the street. I don't think he's seen me yet. Forrest, please. I need your help. I need the code for that security system, or I'm gonna die. Huh. Okay, um... What's the name of the security system? Uh, there's a sticker on the box. It says Starling Security 4000. There's a keypad. Okay, yeah, that's the like that's the thing downstairs. Six digit number. Starling Security 4000, huh? That's right. Very newly installed. I need the keypad. Very newly the installed. Man okay. Gets me. Yeah, of course. So the code hasn't been changed done. like it mentioned Thank in the manual. You, Forrest. I knew I could count on you. I'll sit out of sight. Call me back soon. Okay, yeah, I gotta all go right, run and folks, grab that. Here's a little tune for you all to enjoy while I try to break Dawn into her apartment. Alright, this is... yeah. Coming up for your listening pleasure, it's Caged Tiger with their single, One Last Goodbye. You were pretty See, quiet there, Peggy. The song "One Forest, Last Goodbye" makes me think me? that's the final vinyl we're gonna find in this game, which it, then it leads me to believe weird. this Something is near the end of the game. Weird about that. Yeah. Well, tell you what, we have a Starling 4000 or whatever here at KFAM. Clive bought one for the station. Maybe we can find something to help. Well, I'm not sure who, but to help someone. Okay. All right. Yep. So I have to run okay. back downstairs. So she's locked out of the Woodside and Apartments, and somewhere 
Clive probably has the papers for the Starling 4000. Okay. There we go. I was kind of forgetting which way I had to go, so I was hoping I didn't have to like run all the way back around. Okay, that's not order what I'm delivery for. form. Starling must have left this by accident. The system's not even installed at Woodside. Huh. Requires new parts, new installation date, seventeenth of September. Interesting. Okay. And now I have to find where I put that other paper. I put it in here somewhere. So, we're going to go back looking through here. Okay. I think I dropped it whenever I picked up that uh, other thing. Maybe not. Okay, nothing over there. Starling there. 4000. There it is. User manual. Yeah. Okay. These codes should come in handy. All security measures, alarm test, alarm test deactivation code. Okay, we're going to need all this. kind of insane, but not as insane as the deals at Ponty's Pizza. I don't know. Dude, I'm starting to kind of get used to Ponty, honestly. I don't mind if he uses my uh, my radio station as ad space while there's a killer around. It's fine. Okay. I've had enough of this song, I'm turning this off. Okay, so. There we go. Welcome back, Forrest. Find anything? The Starling 4000 security manual. It's got a bunch of codes. Good. And did you find anything else? I saw a list of everyone else who bought the Starling 4000. Know who was on there? Oh my god. Roller Ricky! I... Do you think we should give him a call? Is that crazy? I don't know what you'd say, but... That might be a good idea. Okay, one moment. I got the number here. Patching you through. Interesting. Shit. He probably can't hear it over the music. Forrest, I don't know about this. This is super weird. Just put me through to Don. I'll take care of this one way or another. Okay, if you say so. Line one, whenever you're ready. Don, are you there? This is Forrest Nash from 189.16, right. The Stream. Let's see if we can save this person. Oh, thank God, you're back. I'm so afraid. What's the code to the gate? The code is 715-914. Thank you, Forrest. Forest, what did we do? Oh. She's the f Oh my god. I didn't even think about it. The reason it's not installed there is because she's the killer. I just got someone killed. Let's just see what happens. Forest, there's another call coming in. Evening, caller. You're live on... Oh, oh. Forrest! Oh. The psycho's somewhere in the roller rink, dude. I just saw a shadow. God damn, how do you even get in? Aw, oh, dude, don't tell me we just killed Roller Ricky. I like this guy. You've got to help me, man. Forrest. Come back. Come back. I can't find my rifle, man. It's... Oh, I God, dude. Oh, 
dude. Maxi. This game He's makes you feel like the biggest wrong. piece of shit for messing up, too. Oh my god. Process what just happened. Uh, uh. Bro, I fucked up pretty bad. Um, yeah, no, like as soon as, as soon as I hmm. realized it was what gonna be that easy, I, I knew that. Oh my god. Why did I do that? Okay. Um, yeah, bro, I don't know. Um, I guess I guess we'll play some David Scopo or something. Whoops. So, the whistling man is a woman? Well, that's one of the whistling men. I had my suspicions. Yeah, sure, Forrest. You just never mentioned it. She called up. You spoke to her multiple times. I knew she wasn't right. Is that right, Sherlock? Why do you think she requested that I'll song? Turn that down. To get me outside? Maybe, but how? She didn't know the song was outside to start with. That's right. She never actually attacked me out there. So? What now? I guess I should make an announcement. Hmm. We do have new info. Okay, kill the music and you can make the announcement. Okay, you're live in three, two... Hey folks, this is Forrest Nash here. I hope you're all safely locked inside. For those of you listening Dude, I feel so last bad about that one because that was like what to make completely my bad. Here's our take. We now believe the killer is actually a woman. One who might manipulate you into letting her in before she attacks you. We're neighbors. Look out for each other and stay safe. The killer was calling themselves Dawn. This could be a fake name. If anyone needs help or you have info on the killer, please call in. You folks have my new number, right? It's 911. Hopefully, our next caller can help shed some light on our killer. Hey, we had a call come in. Okay, folks, time to take a call. You're through to Forrest Nash on 189.16, The Scream. Hey, man. Murphy? Damn straight. What's going on, Murphy? You in danger again? Nah, man. I've just been listening to the show here at home. And since you asked folks to call in if they could help out, well, I'm calling. I don't know if I can say as much as other folks have, but, uh... I figure I've gotten like I half of the people I've helped killed. Fernando, if I didn't try to help, you know? You're a good father, Murphy. Absolutely. Fernando's a lucky kid. Oh, thanks. So, uh, what do you want to know? Well, what can you tell us? Uh, I don't know, really. All right. <laughs> well, do you know anything about the death of George Barrow? Absolutely nothing. Okay. What about the killer herself? She just wants to help. Herself? Man, I, I didn't get my ass kicked by a lady. The man I went toe to toe with was a man, man. You heard the last call, right, Murphy? Yep. So you know it's a woman, and you were trained by a VHS, Murphy. I, I know, but man, how could it have been a woman under that mask? Let's just move See, on. See, I actually Do believe you know Murphy because I believe there's multiple killers. About the history killers. of the whistling man. No, sir. Like, it has to be, right? First time I ever heard of him. What? I moved Bro would here never get them cheeks clapped by some lady. <laughs> what do you want from me? Hey, man. No worries. Just thank you for trying. Right. Sorry I couldn't help you all more, man. Now, if you'd have asked me about gators. Forrest, we have a call coming Murphy in. Murphy knows Sorry, all Murphy, about I gators. I think that's all we've got time for right now. Uh, all right, all right. I'll catch y'all with the gator talk later. Now, I appreciate well, it, Murphy. Folks, that was a bust, but perhaps one of the whistling men might be a gator or something. I don't know. 
Let's find out. This is Forrest Nash, and you're listening. Please help me. My name is Casey Moore. I'm a 25 Nancy Drive. My best friend's been stabbed. He's he's bleeding everywhere. I don't know what to do. Please help me. That address seems really familiar. Easy, easy. Take a breath. Relax. Okay. Okay. We've been out at the reservoir. We were heading back to his place when we heard this whistling all of a sudden. He just started freaking out. He screamed at me, told me to hide. I'd never seen him like that, and I, I just panicked and ran and hid in a bush. Oh no. Forrest. Then what happened? He went up the road and talked to someone. I couldn't really hear or see anything. It sounded like he might have known the person, and they just stabbed him. Casey, was he talking to a woman? I don't know. They had a mask and wore all black. That's all I know. Please, we need help here. I'll get you help, but I need to know. Where did the masked person go? They left. They left him to bleed out. I waited until they oh. were gone, then dragged him into the garage and called 911. Wait, why didn't she make sure he was dead? was destroyed in the explosion at the gas station. You should get all the info you can. What's your friend's name, Casey? Jason. Jason Parker. Can you tell us where Jason was stabbed? They stabbed him in the stomach and then stabbed him again in his leg when he was on the ground and it's... Oh, the knife is still there in his leg. We'll be right back. Peggy, patch us through to the hospital. On it. Phoning St. Gabriel's now. Switch to line two. Hello, St. Gabriel's Hospital. Ooh, I don't think I've line too. Hi, this is Forrest Nash from 189.16. <clears throat> we have a stab victim at 25 Nancy Drive named Jason Parker. He's been stabbed in the stomach and the leg. He's bleeding heavily. Oh, God, I'm sorry. But the ambulance is... Well, you know. I know, but please, we the need something. Blew up. Or he's going to die. Forrest, I... Listen, you're going to have to get him here. We need to see him, and we can't get there ourselves right now. We don't have any way to drive him right now. And even if we did, he's bleeding out fast. All right, listen. We need to buy him time to get here. That means stopping the blood first, and then find him to stabilize him. To stabilize right, so him, pay close attention. first aid training. Do either of you have any? No. Me neither. Uh, damn it. I'm really sorry about this, but I have other patients who can't wait. All I can do is talk you through the procedure as quick as I can, and then leave the rest to you. You think you can handle that? Uh, me. I'm yeah, sure we can absolutely. It. Okay. Help me remember this chat. If he's bleeding out, then you need to get him uncomfortable and try to stem the bleeding. Let me lay him down. Apply continuous pressure directly to the affected areas. When the bleeding slows, get a clean cloth of some kind and hold it over the wounds. Get them comfortable. Apply pressure. Clean cloths when slowed. I got it. I think. You said he was stabbed, right? Object he was stabbed with is still in him. Don't take it out. It's not the okay. worst of the bleeding right now. If anything, you should secure it so it stays where it is. I wouldn't have thought of that. It makes sense though. God, that was a lot of info. But I think we can handle this. I'm glad you got yeah, it so we... far because there's more to go. Yeah, we got it. Rip the knife out. We're good. Um, I'm still with you, Doc. What else do we need to know? If he's lost a lot of blood, he may enter shock. If he does, act fast. If you apply a cloth and it's bleeding through, don't remove it. Just apply another on top of it. If it's safe, elevate his legs to get blood circulating through his vital organs. Try to keep him warm. Get him to rest and reassure him. We need the patient to stay calm. <sighs> Alright, uh, don't replace bandages. Elevate his legs. Keep him warm and calm. This is a lot. I'm really sorry. That's as much as I can give you right now. Try to stop the bleeding. Find someone to get him stabilized and get him here as quick as you can. Good luck. All right, Forrest. Casey's still on line uh, one. Okay. Yeah, we got it. It's Hello? Fine. Hello? Oh, Forrest, are you there? Okay. Uh, I'm here. How is Jason doing? Good. 
did, Casey. The nurse said to do that. What about the knife in his leg? It's gotta be hell. Should I pull it out? Absolutely. No, no don't, don't touch, touch the knife. knife. The bleeding will get worse if you pull it out. Are you sure? I'm sorry. I'm gonna stop making suggestions. No, don't worry, Casey. We're a team here. We're all going to get Jason through this. Casey, is his leg wound bleeding right now? I hate looking at that knife. Yeah, yeah, it's bleeding. His stomach is worse, though. Okay. Um, I think we need to secure the knife so it doesn't move around. Do you have anything you can tie around it? Uh, yeah. If there's some um, laundry piled up on top of the dryer, some cloths on the hood of the car, and what else? Uh, I guess I've got my jacket. Okay. Um. Uh. Okay. Thinking either the laundry or the cleaning rags, I just don't know yet. Take the cleaning rags and hold them over the wound. I really hope these are clean. Here we go. I'm sorry, Jason. It's secure. I'm putting pressure on his stomach again. I'm starting to think we might make it. Forrest, can I have a word? Casey, I'm gonna have a quick word back, Peggy. Keep putting that pressure on and let, let us know when the bleeding is under control. You're doing great. Right. Oh, what if something happens? I'll still be here. Just shout if you need anything, and we'll be there. I promise. Okay. I'll wait. Jason, please be okay. Getting a weird audio glitch. Is it coming from me, or is it, like, skipping? Because I was muting and unmuting my mic for a second, because I was trying to mess with something. Okay, um, of course. Of course. Here. We can't stay on the line with her all night. Dawn is still out there. What if other people need us? You're right, right. She's probably on her way to her next target right now. Exactly. And you heard the nurse. We need someone there with training who can stabilize him. He's got to get to the hospital somehow. Any suggestions, Dawn? Um. I might. A little before you started working here, huh, Kay Pham did a really mandatory weird. first aid training course. Me and Karen missed it because we were away on a producer getaway. You, you skipped it, didn't you? I, never mind. So, how does Kay Pham's first aid course help us? Casey said they're at 25 Nancy <coughs> Drive, right? Yeah, why? They put up a bunch of cheap houses around there about 10 years ago. So a bunch of people here at the station live around there. Do you think any of them could help Casey and Jason? Probably. But I don't know who lives there. And since I missed the training day, I don't know who knows first aid. Could you call them and ask? I don't know everybody's numbers. I've only I think it was downstairs with that. Everybody's piece personnel of paper. info is probably in Reggie's office. Got, got it. I'll we'll look through their files yeah. in Reggie's office. If it's a life or death situation, I'm sure they won't mind. Right. But there are a couple of problems with that. Go on. It's sensitive information, so Reggie probably locked it in his safe. Great. Great. Do you have any idea what the combo for the safe could be? Not a clue. Reggie's a serial note taker, though. Maybe something in his office would give it away. Right. There is something else. Have I not been in Reggie's like office? Am I? Have you ever heard the future is floppy? Peggy, what the hell Never. are you talking about? I'm talking about floppy disks. Floppy disks are like these futuristic things that have information on them. You put them in a computer and they do something. Peggy, I know what a floppy disk is. And anyway, Reggie decided that the future is floppy and started phasing out our physical records and replacing them with these floppy disks. I imagine it's the same for our personnel files. That's good to know. Since we haven't heard anything from Casey, I'm guessing Jason's okay for now. I'll check out Reggie's office and see what I can find. You'll need a key for that. I'll just slide it under my door now. Thanks, Peggy. I just have to look around. Okay. Okay, let okay. me let me out. I'll patch my mic down to the office so you'll hear me over the intercom. It's really weird. Okay. Key found, Reggie's office. So I have to find his safe and then also find notes that will let me crack his safe. Okay, nothing over there. Okay. 
think this is, yeah, this is his office. Okay. So let's find that safe real quick. Alien sightings, number 75 UFO over park. Uh, do not tape over. Interesting. Clive, if you're reading this, stop stealing my post-it notes. Yeah, Clive. What's wrong with you? Stealing a man's post-it notes. Please insert floppy disk. Looks like I need a four-digit code. One, three, three, seven. Nope, that, that's not working. Must be something else. Hint, very important date. Okay. Is it going to be the date that floppy disks came out? Okay. Axe forever. Need to write pitch document, good title, bring back original protag and villain. Okay. Chalupacabra. Insert floppy disk. Okay. This is to certify that Reginald Scott has successfully completed the standard course in first aid to the injured, issued by St. Gabriel's Hospital, Gallows Creek. Okay. Hey, there's a floppy disk. Uh, okay. Ask Genie where those tapes are. It's been weeks now, overdue. Okay. So he said it's a very important date. Saw some VR gameplay of this. It's wild. MetaQuest 2s are like 160 bucks. Dude, uh, I mean, I have like a, a PlayStation VR. But there's like a PlayStation VR 2 now, and apparently it's like way better, so I need to get with the program. Whenever I get uh, this gaming PC built, uh, maybe I'll try out some VR games on it. Okay, so, pizza delivery killer who kills the pizza cutter, free slice on me. Terrifi terrifyingly, there's never any pizza. What happens to the original delivery guy? Maybe write him as a final girl's boyfriend? Protagonist is college student Megan, surname to follow. She's smart, beautiful, resourceful, and lactose intolerant. Amplifies the divide between her and the ki pizza's killer. Uh, takes place on 1107. Very important date for the town. Okay, that's probably my answer. Uh, great goose gathering. Event where larger number of geese appear suddenly and save the town from starvation. Try to link this into the greater story. Need to kill off Megan's support network throughout the movie. Like Acts 3, but even scarier. Maybe partner with Ponty's Pizza for the launch. 110 orders just receive a pizza cutter and tickets to the movie. I'm going to try 1107. Let's see what happens. Yeah, nice. Hey. There is a fucking lot of these. Hold on. Carter Bradley. Uh, Peggy Weaver. Boris Nash, John Hedges, Karen Lawson, Barbara Albright. Okay, we're going to start off with Bradley, Carter Bradley. Here, place that aside, grab this, I'll put it back for him, some nice... they were at the window. That's really weird. Okay. Um, I hired Brad as our station's uh, food critic. People said I was crazy. We only have three takeout places in a diner. What's the point? To them, I say, you can't be afraid to explore the darkest reaches of the unknown. 
Bradley and Barbara seem to be spending an awful lot of time together. I didn't realize she was so interested in Brad's work. Maybe I should join one of their after-work meetings sometime. Uh, I've always wanted to learn more about food. Brad and Barbara ended up missing most of our first aid training session. Brad made a joke about practicing mouth-to-mouth, -mouth, and Barbara got really upset and stormed off. The joke wasn't that bad. Okay, 31 Axe Down Lane. So let me go ahead and look on the map. So, hold on. McCready, McCready, um, William, Jackson, Dinkley, Craven, Cooper, Nancy Drive, okay. Axdown, Axdown Lane isn't too far away from that. It's like a street over, right? Yeah, okay, so that's, he's pretty close. Um, but he's only the food critic. He doesn't have, uh, he doesn't have any training in that. Okay. So let's go ahead and eject that. How do I, how do I get, get it out of there? There we go. Throw it over there. Okay, whose is this? Forrest Nash. That's me. I just want to read this for fun. Get a load of this, Peggy. Apparently, I'm a lone wolf type. Address, come on in, Romero Street. It's actually pretty clever. You're right, I'm sorry, I need to focus on possible candidates. I can read the rest of this later. Janie, 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 and Brenda in this first week. Hopefully that changes when you get settled. I've paired force with Peggy for the show. They seem to have developed a relationship of sorts pretty quickly, which is good because he, uh, he we sure don't know or have the show budget to pair him with Karen. Okay. Alright. So anyway, I think that's enough of that. Drop it over there. Move on to the next one. Uh, John Hedges. Okay. Uh, 14 Nancy Drive. That's very close. Okay. Um, refused to engage with the first aid trainer during the course. I know he was a war medic, but it was station policy to send everyone regardless. John apparently has a bunch of medical equipment in his home that he procured from the military at the end of service. Is that legal? Do I need to report him? Spoke to John again about eating the free samples that Brad gets for his reviews. He said he'd stop, but it said that the last three times it is un-American to reprimand a war vet. I mean, I know he said no to the medical training, but he was a war medic, so I'm not entirely discrediting him. So I'm going to go ahead and place this over here, along with, uh, not mine, uh, this guy. And we're just going to kind of weigh our options whenever we're done. Oh. Alright, who's this? Peggy Weaver. Okay, yeah, let's see what let's see what our friend Peggy does. Hey, Peggy! I think Reggie's on to you and Karen. Maybe don't bring those little drink umbrellas into work for a while. Oh, okay, we need to run the station with girl power. Okay. If Peg Peggy, leaves, Peggy secretly right. wants to run the I'm show. Sorry. She hasn't been shy about getting involved in the calls and the scream. Okay. Sometimes it feels really as though Forrest could just phone. leave for a coffee mid-call and nobody would know. Peggy and Karen have missed another work event, this time first aid training, because of their training session. Their collection of cocktail, cocktail parasols grow after each session. Why are they doing training sessions at a bar? Okay. Give me that. Alright. Barbara Albright. I only have two more to go through, chat. Okay, name, Barbara Albright. 14 Craven Street. Barbara, was, uh, Barbara is get, really getting on well with all the staff here. Everybody gave her great feedback of our last review. I get the feeling there's something going on with her and Brad. Call it a hunch. Barbara's got another cat recently. She must have at least five now. Daisy, Murphy, Penelope, Freddy, and Lord Winston. I need to monitor productivity going forward. The cat photos are a big distraction for the rest of the team. Barbara laughed when I told her about the concept for my new horror script. I don't care what she thinks. A story about an alien egg at the center of the Earth set to hatch on February 30th is a great idea. Why else would we avoid having a February 30th? I don't entirely hate that movie idea. I mean, it sounds kind of funny. Whoops. I missed. Eh. 
There we go. Okay, Karen Lawson, uh, senior producer, has really stepped up her... Okay, 22 Nancy Drive, has really stepped up her duties in recent months. She has fully taken on Ham uh, Hamish's show alongside the Timberline twins ever since Wes left us. Hopefully she doesn't get any ideas without being paid double, or about being paid double. Uh, Karen has stated uh, mentoring Peggy. I think this will be really good for Peggy. They're even doing team building training getaways to improve efficiency. Update, I'm starting to suspect that these producer training getaways are being strategically timed. They've now both missed Secret Santa, First Aid Training, and the Teddy Gallus uh, Junior Station visit. Okay. So, I'm going to put this one in again. Um, hold on a sec. What is going on with my chat? Okay, there it goes. Um, okay, John refused to engage with the first aid trainer during the course. I know he was a war medic, but it was station policy to send everybody regardless. Okay, so there's that. And then the, one, the other one I'm comparing him against is this one. It's crazy. We only have three takeout places. I made a joke by practicing mouth to mouth. Okay. Um, damn. Okay. I mean, it's definitely between this guy and the war veteran. Because, I mean, the war veteran should already know how to do it, regardless of not taking the first aid training, right? I'm going to go ahead and personally say John Hedges. That's who's going to have my vote. I don't really know why I'm carrying this. I'm just going to drop that right there. I think we got what we need. Okay. I wish you could actually move a little quicker in this game. Oh, wait. You know what? I think I forgot one piece of the puzzle. I... Wait, no, no. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. We're good. I was thinking, like, where do I get their number, but I forgot it's, like, all their numbers are posted at the top. Um, do, 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 do. do oh, okay. I guess. I guess I did miss something. Alright, let's go back down there and see what I missed. It's really weird. Okay. Ask Jenny where those tapes are. Er, yeah, it's been weeks now overdue. Okay. What in the world am I looking for? I know, um, okay, hold on, let me go get that one tape I left in the hallway, wherever it is, maybe it respawned, I have no idea where I put this tape. Okay, so the phone. Okay, don't need that. Where? Okay, where in the world am I supposed to be looking? Hey, Peggy, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Did okay, you find there we go. Uh, I think I know who our best bet is to help Casey and Jason. Casey, I'm here. What's wrong? Jason started going pale. I tried to get him to rest, but he just threw up oh, everywhere. Man. What's happening? What do I do? 
God, it sounds like he's going into shock. Casey, just stay calm. It's going to be okay. But the bleeding seemed to slow down. Did I mess up? Jason, I'm sorry. Casey, calm down. You've done everything right. Okay. I, I need you to listen to me, okay? For Jason. What did the nurse say to do about shock? Elevate Jason's wounds. Make them Casey, worse, please. I need you to elevate Jason's legs. We need to get the blood flowing to his vital organs. Got it. Don't, Don't replace it. Bandage. Just apply an addition. Apply another one on top of it. Do you still have something you can use? I, I've used the so far, I'm doing pretty good on this warm, one. So I'll use my jacket. I can always get a new one. I'll fix the bandage and get him warm. Hold on, please. <sighs> sorry, sorry. I'm done. You're gonna be okay, Jason. Just relax. Jason is going to be fine. Just make sure he like knows there's an he's option going just to be, be like okay. that. Okay? It's terrible. Okay. It's awful. It's the worst thing ever. <laughs> Hired Bradley. Okay, uh, since we're spending an awful lot of time together, we're actually so interested in Brad's work. Maybe I should join them on their after work meetings sometimes. I've always wanted to learn more about food. Um. <coughs> okay. John. We need to call John Hedges. He lives on Nancy Drive. He didn't really participate in the first aid training, but he's a former war medic. He's probably the most trained person we have. Really? Yeah, and according to Reggie's notes, John keeps all of his old equipment at his house. He's something of a hoarder. Okay. All right. What's his number? Uh, five four two zero seven three five. Calling now. Let's hope he Who the hell is this calling me? What time is it? John, it's Forrest Nash here at KFAM. We have an emergency, and we need your help. Forrest, if this is a work emergency, then it can wait until the goddamn. Oh god, I'm gonna trigger this dude's PTSD saying the whistling man is back. John, no, this is a medical emergency. A man has been stabbed by the whistling man, or never mind. He he's badly hurt and he's going to die unless we get someone to him now. The whistling man? What kind of joke is this? John, we're not kidding. A man is gonna die if we don't help him right now. Seriously, I, I haven't been called on for over ten years. Where's the patient? What's his condition? He's at 25 Nancy Drive. I think we got his friend to stem the bleeding, but he's gone into shock. He's passed out right yeah, now. Yeah, I feel like this dude's the right call. He was stabbed. Do you know the extent of his injuries? From what we were told, he has two major stab wounds. One to the stomach and one to the leg. The knife is still in his leg, and the stomach wound is open. Understood. Grab a few supplies and I'll head right over. Damned if he dies on my watch. Thank you, John. Hell Let him know yeah. you're on your way. I like this John guy. Hello, Casey. Are you there? How are we doing? Bad. Jason seemed really weak and then just started thrashing. 
What about now? Is he still thrashing? He's passed out! Please tell me you found someone to help! Casey, help is on the way. My colleague will be there soon. You hear that, Jason? Someone is coming! You're gonna be just fine! Just hold on for me, okay? Just hold on! Come on! Hello, Casey? John Hedges, the Oh, John's there. It's really weird Forrest talking Peggy, through this thing to, to them. We've got this from here. Okay. Forrest, we'll call you back later. I have to go now. Good luck, everyone. God, I hope he's going to be all right. <sighs> and with that, the show moves on. We're sending our best wishes to Jason. Well, after all that excitement, I think we could use some music. when you're ready all right I was trying to there it goes yeah the game's really weird about that like whenever you're whenever you're doing something it won't let you leave the area it's like no okay on air okay Supposed to play something? It's getting pretty late. This might be your last break for the night, so try to enjoy it. Give me a buzz when you want to go back on air. Let's roll. You got right. it. We've got another call coming through, too. Oh, we have another call coming in. But hang on. What's up, Peggy? Peggy? Huh? You're going to want to take this call off the air. Who is it? Just do it. All right, folks, it's time for another track. Here's one to help you sit back and relax. We'll be right back after this. So we're going to we're going to do this thing. Okay. Uh, I hope this is good news, Peggy. Who have we got? Find out for yourself on line 1. Hello? I'm glad I got back through to you. Sounds like it's been a busy night, huh? Surprise! It's Leslie, our 911 operator, leading the charge from Henderson to come. I have us. a bad feeling about it's this. So good to hear from you. Are you okay? I am. I'm driving back with an officer from Henderson now. We got back into radio radio one radio officer. A while ago. Been listening <laughs> in, but haven't been able to get through until now. Ever since you found Sheriff Matthews, it's only gotten worse. It's been a long night. Well, it shouldn't be too much longer now. I'm glad I got through to you. I wanted to let you all know what's going on. I made it to Henderson. It turns out somebody had cut the phone lines and they had no idea what was happening. After I told them, well, their yeah, sheriff no, sent a goddamn yeah, squad seems like, back with me to stop this. I don't know. That's great news. Seems like a recipe for disaster. That's crazy about bringing the phone one sheriff lines, back after all this time. I have a really bad feeling them? about that. I'm guessing so. I don't know how he, how she, how the whistling man did it, but that doesn't matter right now. Listen, we're coming in hot, but we need your help. I know Gallows Creek isn't a big town, but if we don't know where the whistling man is, we can't get him. Her. That's where you come in. Uh, haven't we helped enough? Okay. I mean, now that you're back, can't you just... Forrest, ignore him, Leslie. We'll do whatever it is you need us to do. Right, Forrest? Thanks, Peggy. It might be a long shot, but here goes. The whistling man already called up a few times. I bet she calls again. We're still a little ways out of town, so if she calls, stall her. Buy as much time as you can for us to get in. And while you're talking to her, try to figure out where she is. We'll be listening in. Know if she... So once her location I mean, is known, we'll head man. straight there and end this night. Yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like it's just multiple people. I'll do my best. I know you will. Heck, I can see the headlines now. Forrest Nash's interview of a lifetime. Anyway, I'll radio the other cars and tell them it's the plan is a go. Yeah. Hopefully like, the next time I feel I see like you, here's what's going to happen, right? I'm going to start stalling them, and that's going to work. 
but then a we'll murder's gonna soon, happen Leslie. regardless, and we're gonna realize oh, that there's God. multiple killers. It sounds like this is almost over. We're nearly through this. Best we don't waste any time then. Let's get back on air. You got it. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Bringing right. you back live now. Welcome back to the Scream with me, Forrest Nash. The I love just like chucking the thing up. across the Before office anytime I'm done with it. Just like get out of here. I just want to say, things are looking up. It's almost over, but for now, let's bring in our next caller. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash. Hello, Forrest. This is John Hedges. I'm here with Casey. I wanted to give you an update on Jason. John, is is he gonna be okay? He's a fighter. He'll be fine. We've got him stabilized and rested. This thing won't shake shed. anymore. I think he got stuck. To the hospital. Thank oh, well. you so much. If you have been there, then you want the music off? Fine. Yeah, Chuck's the I album. Really want to think about what would have happened. Of course, Casey. We're just happy he's okay. John, Casey, you two did all the work. Tell Jason to get well soon from us. Hey. Whenever he's up for it. Well, why don't you tell him yourself? Is this Forrest? Jason! Jason! At last! It's good to hear you, Jason. How are Jason you? Jason lives oh, well, as uh, the achievement know, I just got. That's funny. I've got a hole in my stomach, and there's a knife in my leg. But John gave me something to take the edge off. So, I might feel even better than either of you. <laughs> take it easy until you get to St. Gabriel's. I will. But, uh... Before that, I, I needed to call you. I'm guessing the Whistling Man is still out there? Yes, the Whistling Man's still out there. Why do you ask? He's gonna say you it was a guy that's You know something about him. the Whistling Man, I don't bet. you? Yeah, I do. Could we talk about what happened earlier? Go for it. Casey said when you were attacked, your assailant said something like, It's not so funny now? Do you know what they meant? I do. I've heard that voice every day in my head for almost 20 years. Every day? Does the killer live in Gallows Creek? No. Not exactly. Hey, guys, I'm really sorry, but there's a call on the other line. I just need to make sure we don't have another situation brewing. You fill Jason in on what happened. I'll be right back. Forrest, have you ever heard of somebody called George Barrow? The boy who drowned? Oh, dang. Sounds like everything's finally coming out now. It's been tough to hold it all in. Sounds like you've been holding back about something awful, Jason. I'm part of the reason my best friend is dead, Forrest. And the few who knew about it said if I ever said anything, I'd find myself in jail for a long time. It was hell. And then the town just moved on like he'd never existed. Weird. Who killed George that night? Some of the guys on the football team had an idea for a way we could haze the newcomers. They decided to plan a party in the woods and have. The he was a strictly platonic crash. friend for us. We, stupid. we each had a role. I was the stabbed friend. At the party that night, I left the group for a second, met our whistling man, pretended to get stabbed in front of everyone, started an almighty ah, panic with those screams. I see. That was the last time I saw or heard George alive. How did George die, Jason? I don't know. I was playing dead. But when I heard her scream... Her? Yeah. George's girl. Do you remember who she was? Yeah. He called her Bean. He called her Bean. I heard her again tonight, Forrest. Sorry. Her right. name was... What? What happened? Uh -oh. Are we still on air? No. No, we're not. Seems like the power is completely gone. How do we get it back on? An emergency broadcast? Emergency? You know, nuclear war, alien attack, broadcast mm. serial killer location. Melanie Martinez? Airpoint! It's in the storage area, in the far back corner, up on the wall. You 
Mm, Ponty's Pizzas. Was there always two of these? Mark Hamill? Who's that M? Morris Mash? That's not opening. Okay. I think I'm gonna go down there and get stabbed. Okay, well, hold on. I don't know if she left me a key or something, because otherwise I'm looking around without a key. No, she didn't. Okay. So we gotta go find this backup generator and hope we don't get stabbed. This dude's looking to tickle our kidneys with a knife. I forgot it locks. Oops. Oh well. We out here now. I've been thinking your little talk show host partner has known what's up the whole time. Yeah, I'm kind of... I was kind of getting that vibe, too. I feel like she knows a lot more than she says, because it's always me that has to go out, right? actually seen her. Yeah, that's a really good point, too. She's, like, just back there wearing, like, full-on, like, costume, like she's the Whistling Man. She has, like, Juggalo face paint. Jogan frog. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it might be. I gotta. Okay, so they said generator. Is it down Far here? Back corner. Yeah. Why is this station so big? Far back corner. Yeah, I feel like I'm gonna die. Like, I feel like the killer is in here. And Peggy just sent me to my death. What you guys think? That must be it. Okay. And check over here, make sure there's no killers hiding about. Check over here. No killers hiding about. Oh! We've got power. The whistle. Let man. there be light. I need to warn Peggy. Peggy's is dirty for this. Here we go. Yep. just gonna be Peggy whistling over here. I hear something. I feel like it's above me. It's like right as soon as I open one of these doors, it's just gonna pop out. Check this out, chat. The music stops, I know I'm about to get jump scared in a sec. Watch this. Maybe not. What was that noise even? The lights come on? Is that what it was? It's Marcus Aurelius. Uh. Okay. Watch I go up there and like Peggy's just dead. Wouldn't that be wild? He didn't set off my mouse trap. Oh no. Peggy! I'm gonna go through his stuff. Where'd you go? Oh damn. 
Yo. No way. You can't this just can't put me in happening. here. Nah, dude. A, a call. What's that, dude? Oh, wait, hold on. What do you want? Good to talk to you again, Forrest. You know, I've really enjoyed our chats tonight. Where's Peggy? Have some patience, Forrest. It's almost the end of the night. Almost the end of the show. But it's not over just yet. We've got a little time still. So let's make the most of it. Now you're great and eight. Happy birthday, pig. Oh. Um. I'd rather not, if that's okay. <sighs> oh, world. Huh? I thought we'd end tonight's Whistling Man special with a special guest. The one who started it all. Oh, oh, let me take that out of your mouth and... You crazy bitch! Let me go! Welcome to the air, Mr. Teddy Gallows Jr. Wait. It's all gonna come out tonight, Teddy. Your daddy and his money saved you 20 years ago. Yeah, so it's it's literally a different killer, though. With all the money in the world. Wait, where the hell is Teddy? How, how are you talking to him if you're here with me? Because I'm not there with you, Forrest. I'm here with Teddy. And if he says where that is, well, he knows I'll get it. Wait, then who am I looking at? Forrest Nash, let me introduce you and all of Gallon's Creek to my boy, Henry Barrow. Hi, Henry. Nice to meet you. <laughs> just like, yeah, what's up, dude? Don't mind him. He's just shy. So there were two whistling men tonight. Of course. That explains how you were always able to get around town so quickly. And Murphy, he, he was Could I not just break he? this window he out? He did fight a man. He did. I taught my boy to never run away from a fight. Hang on. Did you say... Barrel? Then... I feel like if I was Let genuinely trapped here with a killer, I'd just grab this chair and try to break this window or something, Damn right? Comfortable thing. No wonder Mooney went crazy wearing this. Campbell? George's old girl. Oh, well, it sure has been years since I last saw. Oh, God damn it. Uh, I'd be quiet if I were you, Teddy. But I... I'd listen to Forrest. Everyone's gonna know now what Teddy did. He killed George that night. This night. 20 years ago. Listen to me. You ah! You're gonna talk when I talk to you. And not a moment before. Meanwhile, Forrest, I'm gonna give you a chance Damn. to talk. Peggy lived like this? You're gonna help me reveal what really happened to George all those years ago. Why should I help you? Why, why should I play any part in this? Because I think you believe in justice. You think this is justice? You have no goddamn idea. Beating the shit out of the guy. To. Now, I know you've done some good work I'm just tonight. upset that she killed Roland Ricky. Roland Ricky was awesome. Ago, and that's why I want you to interview us. Interview you? All right, I can do that. Thank you. I want you to help me and Teddy tell the story, Forrest. Do a good job. And hell, you might be the only one to leave here alive. <laughs> I need to drag this out. If I can buy Leslie time to get back to Gallows Creek, and if I can find out where Marie is, then this can end. Teddy, what if these aren't the only two people involved? Just uh, talk me through what happened that night. How did it start? How would I know? 
It was 20 years ago. Teddy, be honest with me or we're both going to die. Honest? Forrest, I'm trapped here with a psycho. <coughs> What the hell? God damn it. Okay. Our first team party was coming up. And when I saw the date it was scheduled for, I had an idea for a way we could prank the new guys. Okay. Um. I understand that kids in Gallows Creek know tonight as Whistling Night. I'm guessing that's what you mean? Well, we didn't have a name for it then. It was just the night that Mooney went missing. But Whistling Night is what they'd call it later. Wait. You mean this was the first Whistling Night? I, uh... Keep talking, Teddy. We went up near Whistling Point. Uh, God. Who was there? Me, Jason, and George, of course. Uh, but George didn't come alone. He brought Marie about midway through Can I stick my finger in here? We put the prank into action. We looked up at the trees and saw Jason there. Bloody, like he'd just been stabbed. And the whistling man <laughs> screaming. George and I and Ricky, we got left behind. Wait. Ricky was there? Roller Ricky? He was. And he was in on the whole thing. What? Is that true, Teddy? Did you tell him? What? No, he... You two were as close as anybody. I don't believe for a second you didn't tell him. Ricky had told us. And he just told us. He and George would both be alive still. Hmm. Well, if Ricky weren't dead, we could have heard his side of the story. It was just a stupid prank. How can you still say it was just a prank? Oh, come on. I don't... God damn it. You made George think Jason had been murdered. He thought his best friend was dead. And so tonight you stabbed him for real? It's the role he wanted to play. Jason's still alive, Marie. He was with a friend. We talked her through how to stop the bleeding. I'm like and trying to process everything right now. So like I'm being kind of quiet because I don't... Oh. I don't know. I'm thinking too much. Oh. Shame you didn't have the good sense to die earlier. He's gonna regret that. Enough about him. Me and George took off running, but... Somehow we got separated in the woods. I ended up near the bottom of Whistling Point. And when I noticed George wasn't with me, I panicked. And then, I don't know how he snuck up on me, but the whistling man grabs me, I scream, and he starts laughing, telling me it's, it's just a joke. I can stall for time here. Tell me, what happened next? I suddenly recognized it was Chuck. Chuck, Brody, it was the whistling man. Laughing away. But then he stops. And he's looking up at the top of Whistling Point. What was he looking at? <laughs> Teddy, what happened next? Nothing. <laughs> it was just Teddy. George fell off Whistling Point. Why'd he fall, Teddy? He just... You pushed him. You were up there. You were dressed as the Whistling Man, too. Teddy murdered the dude. I didn't push him. God damn it. I just chased him up there, and he kept backing up. When I saw he was about to go over, I reached out. That's what you saw. You liar. It's not my fault. He didn't know it was a joke. If he'd had any brains... He would have realized. Teddy's gonna die. Ugh, you bitch. No one's going to believe this. After all you did. Even if you didn't push him. 
you still chased him to his death. I can't be blamed for someone not getting a joke. Ugh. I think Marie Dude, would where disagree. are these police officers at? But if you really felt that way, why the cover-up? My future was at stake, Nash. You know what it's like. People like us are bragged for bigger things. I'm going to be the mayor of this town, Forrest. And then governor. And then, who knows? What happened that night was tragic. It should never have happened. But it was a mistake. It was just a stupid joke gone wrong. So my father sent Clive out to clean it up. Why should a blip ruin my future? George was Teddy's a kind of a dick. Blip? That's an evil thing to say, Teddy. That's the way it is. My father agreed with me. You never found his body, Murray? I looked all night. Jogger found him the next morning, washed up on the river. Instead of telling the truth, she lied. She said she'd found him in the reservoir. Our jazz runner, Sandra Sharp. Everyone was in on it, Forrest. Even the coroner wrote a fake report. Said George was drinking. That he just got himself into trouble. And... I saw. I'm... I'm sorry. For all it's worth, Virginia didn't have much of a choice. She had a sick sister whose treatments she couldn't afford. She played along with the gallows to save her sister's life. And her own. Even... even still, she should have told the truth. I did my part. I tried everything I could think of. I even went to the... Complete this thing. But no. That coward killed the story. But Maurice Russell is dead now. You've been through hell, Marie. I'm sorry. You've got no idea. Never started. Bro, these police could show up like any time now. It's coming to a stop. At least for now. Here, where George and I first met before he joined the football team. When right after he shot the winning throw. Wait a sec. Where's Marie? Okay. You're at the football field. Jesus Christ! Forrest, you idiot! I, oh yeah, We're in the shot gym, the wing through. <laughs> I told you not to do that. Wait! <laughs> He's... dead too now, isn't he? He is. Anyway... I think that about wraps up the interview with Teddy. So... I don't really think Teddy's death Marie? is much of a loss, if I'm being honest. Peggy! Teddy! Peggy. It's been so long since I've seen your face. I worried you wouldn't come. And here I was, thinking you'd forgot me. I'd never forget my own sister. Ah. Foreshadowing. Forrest seems lost for words. I, I actually just wasn't looking. I was busy looking at the card. I apologize. Earlier, while you were speaking to Jason, I got a call. Do you remember? Well, it was from Dawn. She said that my sister Marie was there that night George died. I'm gonna start throwing stuff at the window if this dude's up. And yeah, when you lost that, in, you found out that my sister is. The Whistling Man. Good to see you too, Peggy. Why didn't you tell me any of this? She said that it was my last chance to see my sister. I knew if I told you, you'd try to stop me or come with me when we need you on the radio. And I just... You should have said something. You should have told me. I know, okay? I should I'm have. Let me get a synopsis. Okay, then. so... Just um... Basically, all the all the power went out. Uh, we went upstairs. Peggy was missing. Uh, we found out there are two whistling men. There might be more. Uh, one of them is right here with me, and then the other one uh, it was revealed to be uh, Peggy's sister. 
and Peggy Peggy went after her because uh, she got a note basically saying that it was the last chance she'd uh, be able to see her sister. I never knew. It's not your fault. Really, it's mom and dad I should be seeing right now. And also, I'm just throwing stuff at this guy because he's just staring at me. He locked me in this room. I'll have to settle for the next best thing. Uh, she said that that's her boy. Um, something Barrows. I'm really bad with names. Next best thing. Do you mean someone has to pay for what they did? Murray, please. Mom and Dad are gone, Peggy. Besides, you forgot me. Just like the rest. You forgot. Marie, Peggy never forgot about you. Keep your mouth shut. She kept a card from you. She she kept it here on her desk. What card? The card you made me for my eighth birthday. What does it say then? Happy birthday, Peg. Now you're great and eight. Love M. I Yeah, Marie. Well, I I never forgot you. Well, no one's gonna forget now. <laughs> oh damn. Peggy! No! That was wild. Henry, kill him. Oh. Um, hold on. No, no, no. Hey, no mug. You don't have to do this. There's still time to make the right decision. Henry, Slap with a mug. Henry, no! Henry, get out of there! Did you just start running? What the hell? Can't leave. Leslie? Not safe. It's not Peg. safe out there. What she... the hell? Oh my god. Go Peg. cup. Be free. Where's Marie? God. Bolted right as we got here. The police are right on our heels. It won't be long now. It's over, Forrest. Hell yeah. Okay. Oh, these are the people I couldn't save. I see. That's loud as shit. Hold on. I'm stepping away a little bit. Reach the end of the whistling note. Huh. There's like a bunch of different endings to the game. Oh, what? Down with the music, bro. It says to skip the epilogue and credits, and I'm not trying to do that. Yeah, I don't understand. I've got this feeling, it's growing stronger, inside of me, it's a killer frequency. Oh, that's kind of cool. The name dropped. Oblivion. <laughs> it kind of makes song kind of slap it to some extent, but not much. <laughs> I kind of, I mean, it, for what it's worth, it seems very 80s, you know, and I guess that's what they were kind of going for. It's kind of a cool way to end it, though, like we're looking at it through an old box TV. It just kind of sucks, because, like, the sound is, like, super bad if you're right up next to it, because it's loud as shit. Turn it down. No. Nope. Here, let me go ahead and just show you what I'm Sounds like the All American Rejects or something. Yeah, <laughs> kind of does. Suspect cornered at the top of Whistling Point. Oh, it's gonna be a vicious cycle, isn't it? They're gonna end up chasing him off the uh, the mountain. That's how. Uh, Uh, yeah, that's how, uh, that's how Henry died in the first place. That's what started all this. 
Damn. It's kind of cool just hearing all this. I wish there was more stuff to interact with in here. That's about my only complaint. Like a force is just kind of chilling listening to this horror over the radio like a Chad, right? It's kind of cool seeing like all the people that we uh, that we saved and then also failed to save. Apparently that's how Peggy looked. Aw oh, dude, Murphy kind of looked like a Chad. Oh uh, look, that's us. It's Forrest. Honestly, I'm not going to lie, I did not expect Forrest to look like that, I don't know why. Hot Dave. Oh yeah, Dave do be kind of fine there, I guess. Kyle. I don't really like Kyle very much. Aw, oh, damn. Dude, Willie Ricky was kind of tight with him. For the floor for Forrest? Uh, I'd say F. That looks baked. <laughs> These are some ugly looking people. Oh, okay. That's it. All right. Well, uh, I appreciate all of you guys uh, tuning in. That was Killer Frequency. It was a fun little game to stream. Uh, I appreciate all the support. And if you guys like the content you're not following already, uh, it helps out a lot if you guys do follow. Uh, just go ahead and let me know. Um, if there's anything that you guys want to see streamed, any horror RPG games, and I'll see you guys in the next one.